There we go. What is up? Audience, live audience, people catch the recording, you know, leave a review as soon as you hear this. I'm Yogi Chris, PhD. This is Enlightened Masculinity Podcast, which may change its name one day, but it's really a cool name. You know, living the life of abundance. I did four podcasts and this currently, I think is like episode 241 on this podcast. The other podcasts had between uh, 80 and like 150 episodes. So I had like 400 episodes on those other shows too. So I've done like 600, 650 podcasts that's open to the public, free episodes of whatever. And, you know, so this is just another one of those. But <clears throat> recently talking with Miracle J, Prophet, Miracle Prophet, that's what we call him. And, uh, you know, as far as scheduling guests, that's what I was having him do. I thought it it was a great task for him. The I Am Nation is huge. This is an event where, you know, this is the Enlightenment podcast, but I've dedicated my life, you know, so much of my time, the structure of my day when I wake up, when I go to bed. By the way, if there's lag, just comment because I'm doing everything through mobile hotspot. We don't have the Wi-Fi connected here yet. So if the audio quality is whatever, I could take it off Instagram Live. I could... Stop streaming to Facebook. I could do some things to make it better. So if you hear the reception is like going bad, just comment. So I see that and then I'll cut something out. Um, you know, my wake up when I go to bed, who I communicate with through the day. Like I realized three or four years ago, I only wanted to be in communication with IMC guys. Like that was the most enriching and freeing conversations. I was doing so much business for yoga studios and, you know, private clients or online yoga, just like the yoga world. I just gotten away from the science world, uh, you know, finishing my PhD or whatever. And I realized how, how better, how much better it was the conversations with guys that were in the IMC nation, but it was so few people. It's not like the guys that are coming in now, ever since najim has been around, ever since Senor Roque has been around, ever since Gavin's been around, ever since TL has been around. Like maybe TL was around before the gatherings were really happening, the beast camps, but he hadn't attended. And so since he's attended, like, this idea of a monthly event, monthly retreat that you would come to, man, that wasn't around when, when I was having these realizations. So I started, one of the common questions I'll ask guys in the world today, I don't think I'm the, or what I do, uh, I'm world-class compared to the only man that would do better at what I do, AZD. He would sell his stuff better. He's way better salesman than me. You know, and I think some of you could be really good. Like, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for Senor Roque to reach certain points in this evolution before I would invite him to do sales. He already asked to do sales. He would be good at sales. Things of like how it goes down. It would misrepresent things. I... And it's not a fault of his. That's just what it would be if, if you knew. Oh, it says the connection is unstable. I don't know if that means it was laggy for you guys or not. So I'll keep going. Um, a little bit. All right. Well, let me end the stream to Facebook. So Facebook, you guys are done. You're watching over there. You had your chance. You could have come to Zoom. Stop stream. All right. All right. So that should maybe improve it a little bit. Um, so what I do is it's small. It's a small group of people. It's not like real estate. There's so many people in real estate. It's not like auto sales. There's so many people in auto sales. We could compare other personal development. You know, let's just call it like self-help, personal development, men, I don't even know, coaches of the world and put it into one pool. It's a sizable industry. At the top, you really have Tony Robbins and like, like it depends on who you really want to count in that category. Uh, you know, some, there's some, some big followings and whatever. And there's going to be sales. So, you know, what I do, first of all, was so important to me in my in, in intelligence, whatever level my intelligence was that was that i know i'm going to end the uh instagram guys and so you should have come to the zoom by now all right so that's as good as it's going to get for right now because now it's just uh instagram's not live this is just a mobile hotspot through my computer which i guess i could do it just straight from my phone 
actually might be better. So if it still breaks up, there's one more thing I can do, which is go on to the Zoom. I see you say it's better. I could go on to the Zoom on my phone. So we got one level better we can get from this also, if it gets bad. Okay, much better, good. That's too bad, because the intro is so important for a podcast episode. So that's you know what it is. Maybe in the description I can say starts off shoddy, whatever. Um, You know, I had made disinformation so important to me in my life that I pushed other, like I knew that it trumped other things. So if other things, I wanted to keep up with other activities, other passions, other relationships that weren't necessarily IMC relationships. But if one contended with this, it had to go. Like this, I already decided. People would maybe try to put it to you like, it's me or them, it's me or him, it's me or that movement, it's me or that. And that's, you're losing, don't do that to yourself. You're going to lose me. You're, and then when they don't have a problem losing you, that means they were really just interested in controlling you. They weren't interested in the relationship with you. They were interested in you on their terms, which in a way, we're kind of doing that to them, saying, no, it's got to be on my terms. But our terms are way more going to the skate neighborhood. I would call it way more ethical because it's, we don't put it there to, to control them. We, we put it there to protect our own lives. And... Uh, it doesn't even get said until something butts up against our life. Like if we don't have to tell them when we're studying IMC Nation, you got to study IMC Nation too. It's just when they start doing things that are counter to what we would want, like over drinking or talking to our girls or, uh, you know, just being rude in social situations, not understanding social dynamics, but not making it a priority to learn it. So at that point, now their priority, now we see their values. So we would break off the friendship for value conflict. They would break off the friendship because doesn't feel good. It's a slight difference. It's a philosophical difference. You can make the right decisions for the wrong reasons. You can take the right, right actions for the wrong reasons. You can get the math problem correct doing it the wrong way. That doesn't mean it's equal. Your way was not equal to mine just because you got to the same answer. You know, because mine, I can, I can transpose, I can translate it, I can use it in so many situations because I did it right. You just got lucky and it's still going to fail for you. So there's a difference. And, you know, so I'd already made the decision. This information was so important for all the angles in my life. I then made, came to the uh, realization or whatever that I just wanted to have interactions with IMC people. And that those conversations, I was still very much in the normie world, unplugging, still unplugging. I'm still, I still consider myself a five-year-old at this stuff. And, but that's better than being like a negative 10-year-old where you're still like in the matrix just fully, still 10 years before you wake up. And uh, so I had this impulse to communicate with guys. So in the role, in the position I'm in now, I may communicate with 300 guys around the world, more or less. It was more, but I've been handing them off to the, uh, you know, some of the apprentices or whatever. And <clears throat> I'll ask them, I'm like, are you in communication with any other IMC guys? Who other IMC guys are you talking to? You know? Roke's already gotten like two, maybe three guys onto Dragon's Lair. He's gotten one of his buddies to show up for Beast Camp with him. That's spreading the word, you know? So, uh, you know, I'll ask people like, who, if you're in San Diego, who else in San Diego are you talking to? You know, we got Von Wilson there. We know, you know, we got Lone Wolf there. If they're in Albuquerque, I'm like, you ever go to Roswell? We got TL there. Like, if you're in Vegas, you know, we got Vegas Pro. We got, I'm telling them you're in Toronto, we got this guy there. You're in Miami, we got this guy there. Are you talking to them? If you're in Amsterdam, you know, we got this guy in fucking Stockholm or whatever. Like, right there. Because to those guys, I know what it's like to those guys. They're learning this AZD tech and they're like super excited about it because they see nobody else in their ecosystem and their human ecosystem is aware of this stuff. So they're like, man, I see it. Like, I know I'm not good at it, but if I get it, like, I got an upper hand on all these cats and they're like real excited about it at some point they'll be a little lonely about it they'll need a guy friends they'll need some strength around them they'll you know <clears throat> and then that conversation is so important when you have an imc brother it just frees you up because the world will confine you you'll get triggered and something like it's just really freeing and to know and then to have safe space uh, like a, a territory you can go to where it's like man really helps you expand and grow and heal as a man and it just you know, makes you stronger like healing is not a sissy thing healing makes you stronger healing makes you able to use more of your strength that's the idea like if i lacerated my arm healing would make me more functional i want to heal uh, 
So that's like stage two. Stage one was I had come to the logical philosophical realization that this stuff, it underlies all activities, all human activities. Like uh, what I'm doing as a guy, everything I'm doing as a guy, it's going to be a choice of mate is at the end of that somewhere. Like I'm making money for that. I'm buying cars for that. I'm making network connections. I'm, le- I'm seeking fame or legacy, but maybe a few exceptions. But even them, like Elon Musk or whoever is so passionate about te- Tesla, the guy Tesla, like so passionate about his science. Man, if he still didn't yearn for positive female interactions, plural, he didn't have a yearning for a woman to understand, a beautiful, soft woman that was intelligent enough to get him to understand his needs and be there to compliment him and he could support and have that relationship. I guarantee he wanted that. And if he didn't, then that's so awesome that he made all those inventions, but I definitely don't want to be like him. Like, I admire that and I would want that, but like, where was the relationships? Now, I don't know what Tesla was like, because it's all, all probably, one second, I'll get to the question. It was all probably misinformation, what we even know about the past. Who knows who wrote what, whatever we read. But just as a conceptual idea, like a genius who's so passionate about their art or their music or their, or their work or whatever, they still probably want fulfilling. Like, the, feet, the code of how you interact with the game, basically. Game gets misunderstood as like the pickup. Pickup is game, but it's a sliver of game. Game is how you relate with women, mom, sister, niece, and relationships, homeless woman, like, and then ultimately even men, it's so related. Like game is, is the strategy. It's a word that means your strategy of human interaction. And AZD's got the top level game, not because he picks them up so fast or lays them so fast, but because the way he leverages social interactions to position himself in his freedom, uh, you know, it's not to position himself so he can run for mayor because then there's a lot of obligations and responsibilities that pulled you away from imagination and creativeness and living a free life. Like, why, why do you need to go to be president? It's not all about that, but to position oneself to have the life that you really want. And, you know, never mind people how honest they are with themselves about the life they really want, but, you know, give them a bunch of money and then you start to see the life that they want for themselves and you see how off their desires are, you know? So I want to make sure I remember my thought before I answer the question. Uh, step one, oh, philosophically, understand all of it is underneath all of the activities. So therefore, every activity, uh, if given the choice to master that activity or this one, I choose this one. Choose that activity or this one, this one. That activity or this one, this one. This one beats learning yoga. This one beats environmental uh, protection agency. This one beats real estate. This one beats... Uh, being a family man, this one beats settling down. This one beat like just beats whatever else there is. I still want to do some of those things. It beats playing the guitar. It beats learning jujitsu. I still want to do those things. But if it comes up, if it butts head with this, I'm choosing this. And I made that decision for myself. And stage two. So I had done that. I was moving forward, burning bridges and keeping the lines open with the people that were at least not necessarily supportive, but like not suppressive. And uh, which was an abundance thing. If I had much more abundance of supportive lines, I would eventually drop the, the average lines also. It's just a scarcity thing. But I was at least cutting out all of the suppressives. Then the next thing was, which makes sense, I really wanted not just suppressive or not to get rid of suppressives and not average. I wanted uplifting conversations. And IMC was the only ones I was getting that with. I was, ah, I needed to meet and talk with some guys. Johnny Freedom was the first one that I met. And then Cameron McGriff in Tampa. And then, you know, a few other, and then, I, you know, I met some guys at events, but I mean, outside of events, that was the thing, outside of events, meet guys. Very special thing. Very rarely does it happen outside of the bases or camps. And before the bases, very rarely did it ever happen outside of camps. And there weren't that many camps. So that means very rarely did it ever happen. It, very rare. I met Miracle J too. Miracle J might've been the first or second one. I, I forget. It was in there in Houston. Um, I met him in person outside of the event. This was years ago before these monthly events. So I was, I was yearning the freedom. I realized after events, if I could hang around with the guys for an extra six hours or an extra day, it was way better than just leaving the event and going right back to my life. Cause the language immediately narrowed down. It would be like Gavin's playing a six string. It would be like having a two string guitar. And as soon as he leaves the six string behind, all he has is a two string and it's like still fun, but it's like, ah, I can't even play the songs. I know. And it's like, I got I to gotta start from scratch almost and, and fuck this. I'll just stop playing. You know, eventually you'll pick it up again for a two string or even a one string. You'll pick up a, a fucking mouth flute or whatever. 
if you get bored enough, but you like the six string and I like, you know, saying the words that I say and talking about the concepts that I like and, you know, strategizing my day the way I like to strategize it, like freedom, you know, of expression. It doesn't mean that you need a 24 string guitar, but it's like you, you do what you want because it's manageable. What can you create with, you know, what's available and then you just choose your instrument. It's freedom. So, okay. So that was step two was seeking those communication lines. So I remember where I am, step one, step two, I knew step three. So Senior Walker, you got your hand up. Uh, brother, if you're uh, finishing up the sequence, uh, go ahead and just finish it off. Um, come, come again? I said, if, you've, if you're finishing up a sequence, like if, if you're explaining something step by step, don't. Sort of, I'm <laughs> making it up as I go along. Like when I started talking, the points kind of came to me as like, I was seeking communication lines before that, I realized philosophically I had an edge on any other, if anybody tried to sell me on any activity, on any lifestyle, on any profession, I had an edge on that because I saw the thing that they were all seeking with their, with their lifestyle, with their decisions. So right, it, was, it became next to impossible for anybody to sell me on something. I did, I got sold on a $7,000 program and I see the promise of it. it. It was teaching how to do the marketing funnel and put an online program into, and this and that. And I bought that before AZD gave me this position. I didn't, I had no idea this position to sell for his camps was going to come around the corner. That wasn't, I had no idea that was happening. So it was a few months before that I went for this other program. I asked for a loan from my grandpa, to do it. And, um, and I, I mean, I was thinking, how am I going to apply this to AZD stuff and whatever. Uh, so I was seeking I got the leverage of the philosophy. Then I was seeking communication lines, freed up communication lines. So what that led to was me reaching out to people who were in the IMC nation and getting that going. And that's, that was before I was selling camps or getting any commission. I wanted, I yearned, I was seeking the co conversation with the IMC guys. And, uh, and then of course I did what I did to come to the Tabiat event. And I was asked to do this position. And so then I, I started professionally, I was seeking lines that maybe I wouldn't have sought as a personal communication line. I was just seeking to integrate, to pull in these guys that were interested in some way, to some degree of IMC teaching. So I saw them on this stream or they commented on the YouTube or, or they, they, even they liked my post and I hashtag IMC Nation and they liked my post. I would just message them and, you know, it was a sloppy organization at first, but I kept track and I kept in touch with people and it started with 50 people and then it was 75 and it was over hundred and it was over 200. Now it's up to uh, 1100. It's just only 300 of my am like communication with some of them are just not responsive. They're weird like that. I did, but I collected emails and stuff and just three hundred guys very interested. So greatest salesman in the world. I'm, I haven't lost like that's what I'm talking about. And, you know, why every man doesn't enter this sort of movement, I don't understand. I have yet to figure it out. If it's crossed your mind, I haven't figured it out for myself yet. I know that it's not my problem. It's not my concern. I get the, the enticement of, man, there's like 4 billion guys on this planet. If I sold them, I'd make a lot of money. Maybe if I can just convince them. But, you know, so the best that I have is, it's two things, and they're probably related. And this is just as an entertaining aside, so I don't know how necessary it is. But why every man doesn't get sold on it is first, and this is meant, it is meant to be a harsh judgment, but it's also, I get that it's just not understood because I'm barely, I'm starting to understand it. And it's ethics. And so it's a harsh thing to say, but I also get that they're in ignorance of it, but that doesn't make it ethical. It doesn't become, ethical or not ethical, just because you're ignorant of it, it is ethical or unethical because of the logic of ethics. And so your ability to be honest and face how you're feeling, how you, what your opinions are, confronting people who disagree with those opinions who are necessarily in your life, you don't have to confront any, any person down the street. So you're a liberal and confront them. No, like, but somebody in your immediate family, someone you do business with, someone that you work for, like, who are your communication lines? How important are your views on those lines? And then do you suppress yourself or repress your, yourself from expressing those and harbor bad feelings and take it out somewhere else? And like, 
that's what people that have like regular jobs, they fake it at the job so they don't print, uh, you know, have any arguments at the job and they go home and have arguments. And that's low ethics, right? You should just not have arguments at home and argue with people at work. And then you might lose your job, but that would be more ethical because that's a further dynamic from you. Closer dynamic would be at home. And uh, you could always get another job. So it's really, that's more of a group dynamic than a solo dynamic. Dynamic is a term that comes from ethics. I've already given a book, so a talk on ethics. And, you know, maybe that's why that was the first episode that I did on book review, which was last Friday. So it'll be posted like tomorrow or something. Um, so there are low ethics. And then also just another thing that's very related to low ethics is just a low level of consciousness. Like where is their conscious awareness of, let's say like the first thing of that I said, I realized that philosophically this kind of undercut all other philosophies. Uh, which what is this IMC philosophy? It's a long list of things to say, what is this philosophy? Communication, imagination, relations, uh, sex psychology, and uh, you know, martial arts, martial mindset, you know, the, the philosophies of power and ethics basically. Uh, you know, putting all those things together. So that's why men won't take to it. They won't realize how important relationships with women are. They won't realize uh, what game is. They can't wrap their mind around it. They're so in, enmeshed and involved in a different matrix of words. And it, it's so far from them. And then they have so many, so many blind spots on their own energy body, on their own psyche, that when those, when those blind spots are touched, they have bruises there. They're wounded on topics and on certain situations, and especially relating to women and sexuality. And, and due to their out ethics, they're unethical. They've conducted themselves in a way that they have incidents in their life where they made decisions that are unethical and they're ashamed of those. And when they go uh, into this art and science, it, it, it's very difficult to be a freely expressive person without being able to freely access all of your mind and all of your memories. And it's hard to be confined somewhere, but then still be freely expressive. You'll be found out because you won't be that, you'll, you'll still be boxed in in some ways to how you express yourself. And that'll be reflecting how internally you're still boxed in. You won't allow yourself to uh, view this memory or this idea or um, you know, this imagination thing or you know, be present with your own mind. So, um, So the guys you talk to, they just, you'll spend a long time trying to educate them up to where they value it. And you'll miss out on a lot of other people that are closer to valuing it. And so there's probably a lot of weight or a lot of um, credence or a lot of um, truth to having set up a really nice marketing funnel that mark funnel funnels that you can send out did in the digital uh, ecosystem that will pull people in a large amount to some intro level teachings, necessary intro level teachings that shifts beliefs about these things that gets them to the next level of the funnel where maybe they get on some kind of a whatever and they get more education and somehow they get, get to a, a call or they join an entry level program where they get more education and it's built in a structured way. So it keeps pulling them deeper and deeper into this matrix. And to set up that whole education system, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I could see how that would bring in good money and good business and really wake up the planet. That'll happen when it's the right thing to happen. Because right now for us to use our time to do that, again, takes away from the people that are close getting the teachings. And it uses our time to do something that's not our expertise. Now we could go and find someone who that is their expertise, but it's kind of like handing over the sales to Daniel Roque so he can do the sales. If they're not aware of the, in, of the system throughout, they're going to fuck up the sales funnel. They're going to fuck up the education of it. Now, maybe I could step in and micromanage that, but again, I don't have the time for that. At some point now, you're like, well, what if you made $2 million in your first year sales? I'll bet then you'd have time for it. Yeah, but I'm not chasing the money like that. I don't want to lose a year of my life to chase money. That's what my whole life was, was chase this accomplishment, chase this achievement so that Next year, or in two years, or in five years, or in 10 years, I'll have the thing that I want. Nah, nah, what if I die next week? I want to do what I want to do today. And it's not chasing a funnel so that I can get more clients. Like there's plenty of clients. Now, there is a necessity for marketing promotion. That's why AZD puts out YouTube videos. That's why he has another employee, his name is Ebo, who lives in Germany, who has chopped up his 
YouTube videos and made them even shorter and more entertaining because they're cut up and faster paced. And he's reposting those and it's a lot of traction. And there'll be growth in that way. And uh, there's a reason, you know, there is something about me being in communication with guys that if I just present them with a link to sign up for a camp, they don't buy a lot of the times. For some reason, they need some communication. They know they're going to buy. Yeah, you got something, Daniel Roque. Go ahead. Jesus. So enthusiastic. here. Yo, bro, 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 bro. So look, um, uh, wow. I, and I want to hear what you have to say about this, brother, because um, I've, I've been having some, some success with it. And uh, I, I think you and I could, could probably like work something yeah, out right So essentially um, how I got these guys to sign up this, this last month is um, I was qualifying them the whole, whole time. I actually didn't um, mention too much about um, AZD at all. I mean, not pickup, not, not anything. Um, really, I was just asking questions. And um, I started qualifying them, really, because they asked, it, they, they, asked it, uh, they asked me questions about, like, what is IMC Nation? And all I said was, uh, you know, before I even give you any sort of details, um, let me find out a little bit more about you. So what is it that you do? Um, do you read any books? Who do you listen to? Um, you know, just pretty much just questioning them as to like why they do what they do. And then I just started asking them about, you know, their the life's biggest challenges. So uh, Jeremiah, you know, he has challenges with like money specifically. And so I was just like, man, like, Honestly, I feel you. I'm right there with you. You know what I mean? And that's exactly why I want to work on, you know, my mind, right? Getting my mind, uh, you know, not letting my mind run me, but vice versa. Me, me running my actions, me deciding what I want to do in spite of what's going inside my mind. And I got a lot of compliance as far as like, yeah, actually, I, I do agree with that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, so pretty much me, me stepping into his world and having him understand that I understand where he's coming from and exactly what, what he wanted. So all I just said was like, hey, yo, bro, like literally the person that's mainly, mainly helping me, his, his name's AZD. So um, I'm going to go and invite you to a Dragon Slayer call. And I just yeah, he signed him. up for Dragon Slayer. Talk to him. What's that? He signed up for Dragon Slayer. I talked to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. A Dragon Slayer, and uh, he he pretty much was like, "Yeah, bro, like I'm I'm gonna do it." But literally, I just plugged him in, um, mm -hmm. and That's literally, I, I I didn't have to for him with him. I didn't have to speak uh, to him about like you know pickup or nope. or you know any any of that. I was just like, "Cause that's not what this is." World. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's game. Like you said, you know what I mean. Game is everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's everything. So, yeah. so literally, um, just stepping into this world, asking the right questions, and that's mm -hmm. literally what, why they hopped on board. But yeah, uh, I'd be more than happy, you know, to help you out in any any way that I can, you know. Yeah, right uh, on. I'll let you do what you're doing there in base three with Oracle and establish yourself there for a few months, and you know, see you this month at camp. And there are a few guys that are ahead of you on the list to to do that. So I'm gonna let them work it out and. I'll give them a few months, and if they're not producing anything, then I'll look again at the IMS station and see who's like some of the. Absolutely, brother. But, um, yeah, yeah. So that's what it is, and that, that's perfect. That's what it is. Like, just get them on the feeder program. Get them on the Dragon's Lair because Dragon's Lair is they're going to get a, a lot of that education, that preliminary education that they need. They need a different language to understand how you're talking about this stuff. Otherwise, you're going to have to slow it down. You don't have time for that shit. Like, there's, there's a lot of guys that are closer that I, I'm more interested in working with. And uh, for the time being, you know, I think I am even able to suggest to myself better ways of doing things. And yet, maybe I resist or maybe I talk myself out of it or maybe there's too many unknowns and I'm measuring cost benefit. Like, what's the opportunity cost of exploring new ways of doing things? What I know is that I'm the top producer in IMC Nation, thanks to AZD. But AZD never produced 50 or $60,000 events month after month after month after month for 30 months in a row. He did one $125,000 event that I, you know, 
no credit to me. I got the assist. I was assisting a lot. I, I got Akash to do it. I got Pete Kirkwood to do it. I got Jay Wonder Jay to do it. And then I myself did it. And that that's the event that AZD was like, hey, take 10% to you know, get guys for the, you know, for the next event or whatever. I don't want to do that anymore. And so before that, his biggest event was like 28 grand event was the Red Lotus event. And, you know, before that was less like 14 K event or something. So those were his biggest events. And then I came in, was like pulling everybody. It took a while before I beat that record. I never beat 125 K in that month. And really 125 K didn't come in that month because I was on payments. Everybody was on payments. Probably like 30 K came in in that month and everybody did payments. Um, 5 K a month or whatever. And but AZV would do much better with all of these guys. But I'm just saying that in all of the people interested in the subject, I would just far out produced everybody. And you could give it a shot. I could give you my list, but nobody gave me a list. I built a list. So build the, build the list from where you are, who you're in communication with. And, you know, until somebody is producing something, even on the order of 10% of me, like I, I can't, I can't listen to it. Not that you're doing, I'm not saying that about you. You're not, you're not doing that. I'm just saying that, I don't question my systems or my process until somebody starts producing something. And we might see that with Marin. Marin does like copywriting. And so he can write up some emails and some sales emails and see what he can get going. That would be very exciting. I love being competitive if somebody can get a bunch of guys to sign up. Um, so I'm talking about the greatest salesman in the world. I'm not doing a great job of getting to the book, but I think a lot of the principles I'm talking about are from there. Um, you know, reading, I highly recommend the book. It was an assigned reading back when I was doing mentorship with AZD. So I'd already invested all my money in AZD stuff and I didn't have any left. I was, you know, hustling as best as I could with my business as a travel yoga instructor or whatever. And uh, he was doing this mentorship for a thousand dollars a month. And I didn't have a thousand dollars at the time. I had like very little money. And he calls me 10% or 10 minutes before. And he was like, you know, are you going to be on this mentorship? I'm about to start. And I was like, I don't have any money. This is like three or four years ago, maybe. And uh, he was like, well, just join, just be on. You can be my guest for it, like for the program. Yeah, you're on. Now, I'd already done a one-on-one, -on -one, a bunch of one-on-ones. I'd invested a lot, you know, everything. Uh, been to so many camps. Man, so many memories. Jesus Christ. I really want to go back and do like a timeline of that stuff. Just go through my notes and just kind of make a chart of like, this is when this is. Because there's a lot of history before the Beast process happened, before the Love Spell boot camps happened, before Tabiat events happened. We're talking before April of 2019, so before three years ago. There's a lot of events and, and evolution that happened with Vince Kelvin, with the No Fucks podcast, with the mentorship. Because, for example, I have mentorship notes, and it's about a 230-page typed PDF of mentorship notes. There are many lectures in there. I think there's maybe like over 200 lectures in there. And that's how many mentorship lectures were, he was given, giving to the girls, uh, his, his girlfriends, and I think maybe other women were on. And then a handful of guys. And uh, in that mentorship, because I regarded the mentorship as such an important um, time of my day. Like I had to show up for that. Like rearrange my schedule to show up for that because he would announce it earlier in the day when it was. And in that mentorship, one of those classes, he said, signed reading, greatest salesman in the world. And so I got the book right away. And it's easy read, short book. However, it has a process in it that will take you 10 months to complete. And you'll have to stick with it every day. I stuck with it every day. And it's a 10-step process. One of the steps of that process, step number two, is going to be my throwaway monologue in my next private moment, if AZD allows it. Scroll number two, scroll mark two. I will greet this day with understanding in my heart, for this is the greatest weapon, for this is the greatest, what is it? For this is the greatest secret of success in all ventures. Muscle can split a shield and even destroy life, but only the unseen power of understanding can open the hearts of men. And until I master this art, I will remain no more than a peddler in the marketplace. I will make understanding, sorry, the scroll actually uses the word love. It was going to be a secret. So I'm going to change the word for the, for the, actual, for the actual camp. I will greet this day with love in my heart. 
For this is the greatest secret of success in all ventures. Muscle can split a shield and even destroy life, but only the unseen power of love can open the hearts of men. And until I master this art, I will remain no more than a peddler in the marketplace. I will make love my greatest weapon and none on whom I call can defend against its force. My reasoning they may counter, my speech they may distrust, my apparel they may disapprove, my, re my face they may reject, and even my bargains may cause them suspicion. Yet my love will melt all hearts like the sun whose rays soften the coldest clay. I will greet this day with love in my heart. And how will I do this? From this moment forward, I will look on all things with love and I will be born again. Now, henceforth, I will look on all things with love and be born again. I will love the sun for it warms my bones, yet I'll love the rain for it cleanses my spirit. I'll love the light, star of truth, for it shows me the way, yet I'll love the darkness for it shows me the stars. I'll welcome happiness for it enlarges my heart, yet I'll endure sadness for it opens my soul. I will acknowledge rewards for they are my due, yet I will welcome obstacles for they are my challenge. I will greet this day with love in my heart. And how will I speak? I will laud mine enemies and they'll become friends. I will encourage my friends and they'll become brothers. Never will I dig for reasons to, never will I, never, always will I dig for reasons to applaud. Never will I scratch for excuses to gossip. When I'm tempted to criticize, I will bite on my tongue. When I am moved to praise, I will shout from the roofs. Is it not so that the birds, the wind, the sea, and all of nature sings with the music of praise for its creator? Cannot I speak with the same music to his children? Henceforth, I will remember the secret and it will change my life. I will greet this day with love in my heart. And how will I act? I will love all manners of men for each has qualities to be admired even though they be hidden. With love, I will tear down the wall of suspicion and hate which men have built around their hearts and in its place will I build a bridge so my love may enter their souls. I will love the ambitious for they can inspire me. I'll love the failures so they can teach me. I'll love the kings for they are but human. I'll love the meek for they are divine. I'll love the rich for they are yet lonely. I'll love the poor for they are so many. I'll love the youth for the faith they hold. I'll love the old for the wisdom they share. I will love the beautiful for their eyes of sadness. I will love the poor. No, I will love the ugly for their souls of peace. I will greet this day with, under, with love in my heart. And how will I react to the actions of others? With love. For just as love is the greatest weapon, no, just as love is my weapon to open the hearts of men, love is also my shield to repel the arrows of hate and spears of anger. Adversity and discouragement will beat against my new shield and become as the softest of reins. My shield will protect me in the marketplace and sustain me when I'm alone. It will uplift me in moments of despair and calm me in time of exultation. It will become stronger and more protective with use until one day I will cast it aside and walk unencumbered among all manners of men. And when I do, my name will be raised high on the pyramid of life. I will greet this day with love in my heart. And how will I confront the actions of others? No, how will I confront others? Wait, how will I confront each whom I meet? In only one way. In silence and to myself, I will address him and say, I love you. Then though spoken in silence, these words will shine in my eyes and wrinkle my brow, bring a smile to my lips and echo in my voice, and his heart will be open. And who is there who would say nay to my goods when his heart feels my love? I will greet this day with love in my heart. And most of all, I will love myself. For when I do, I will zealously inspect all things which enter my mind, my body, my soul, and my heart. Never will I overindulge the requests of my flesh. Rather, I will cherish my body with cleanliness and moderation. Never will I allow my mind to be attracted to evil and despair. Rather, I will uplift it with the knowledge and wisdom of IMC Nation. Never will I allow my soul to become complacent and satisfied. Rather, I will feed it with transcendental meditation and prayer. Never will I allow my heart to be small and bitter. Rather, I will share it and it will grow and warm the earth. I will greet this day with love in my heart. Henceforth, I, henceforth will I love all mankind. From this moment, all hate is let from my veins, for I have not time to hate, but only time to love. Henceforth, no, from this moment, I take the first steps required to become a man among men. With love, I will increase my sales a hundredfold and become a great salesman. If I possess no other qualities, I can succeed with love alone. Without it, I would fail even if I possessed all the knowledge and skills of the world. I will greet this day with love and I will succeed. Yay.
I got to get better. I got a few days left to practice. You know what I'm saying? I got to throw it away a lot better. You know, I'm still, I'm still like remembering it. I got to say it like a hundred times in the next four days, I think. Next four or five days. Damn. Whew. So that's scroll mark two. So what? Yeah, 99 out of 100. So got to get a hundred out of 100. So, you know, you read that every day in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. And you do that for 30 days. And then you do scroll mark three and then scroll mark four and then scroll mark five. And when I did that, it didn't, it wasn't enough to memorize. Just to give you an idea, reading it three times a day for 30 days was not enough to memorize it. So I have read this much many more than that to get that memorized. And, you know, a bit off more than I could chew or whatever. Anyway, The Greatest Salesman is a great book. And it's a great story, tearjerker and uh, short. And it is religious, you know, it's Christian, but, uh, you know, nine of the scrolls are very uh, good. The last one's really good too. It's not that Christian, but it, it is a it is a Jesus book, but barely, barely, and it didn't convert me, so I don't think it would convert you either. It's just kind of it's a great story. So, um, you know, Daniel Roque is no longer with us right here, but of the people able to come into, found it in the Bible, so yeah, right. Uh, of the people that are able to come into IMC Nation and like be attracted to this information, I'm the top producer. And I think that there could be more people and I'm open to expanding. You know, I want the guys to expand. I got five guys right now that I'm working with on expanding the lines because there's a lot of guys in Dragon's Lair who don't respond to me. I have their email and I email them and they don't respond to me. I see them open my newsletters and then I send them a personal email and they don't respond to me. I can't find them on Instagram, on Facebook. I don't know if they're just not responding to me or if somehow it's always going to spam. That seems unlikely. So getting other guys to message some of those guys and then getting everybody to message the people on their social media, the guys on their social, because you guys need to know this stuff. You need to know what's available to you in human interactions and female interactions. It rips you out of your frame. It rips you out of your hypnotized reality that you're just hypnotized into and gets you thinking outside of that. And it can be painful. It can be a rabbit hole. It can be distracting from other hobbies and passions that you find you know, great pleasure in. and you know, you, so you take it at your pace. What I have found at this stage in my evolution is such a willingness to put all of my hobbies aside, even to put my yoga aside if need be. But it's it getting to the bottom of the, the bottom line of things that probably yoga can't be put aside. Like that's a necessary ingredient also. So hallelujah, like was just written, hallelujah, that I was already doing that. Yoga actually led me to AZD and IMC Nation. AD at the time, 85E he was known as, 85th element. So, uh, greatest salesman in the world. Yeah, I recommend that. And, you know, my private moment this coming weekend, a week from now, six or seven or eight days from now, will be scroll mark two, if I'm allowed to do that process. And uh, I feel like I could keep going, but I would probably pull on another subject. And so maybe I won't. I'll open it up if you guys have any dialogue. And Shamir just joined at the end here. So, Maybe you didn't catch most of it. We're looking to get featured on Apple Podcasts also. So right now, Apprentice Josiah is working on the channel art because they needed a, uh, an alternative art. They couldn't use our main channel art. And Tony Kazmiski, another apprentice, is uh, emailing with Apple right now to get our podcast featured. It's like one of the features on Apple, uh, the app. Uh, so that would be exciting. There's a lot of you know interesting shows out there. I was looking. A lot of people have a lot of reviews. I see how the sex talks, anytime there's a even semi-attractive woman, although it's probably not even necessary that she's semi-attractive, anytime there's a semi-attractive woman talking anything sex topic, fucking everybody flocks to that show. Just to hear some woman talk about orgasms or dildos or vibrators or, you know, oral orgasms. Yeah, just look it up. There's a ton of shows about that, a bunch of just like dirty women that, you know, whatever. I'm sure they're clean physically, probably, hopefully, but like, you know, Mentally, that's just, ah, oh, it's just so dirty. It's like, is it that I'm uncomfortable with it? Maybe, maybe I don't like the idea of a woman. Like I would not want to fight to protect that. I would want not, not want to go to war to come back to that. Like what would make me go through hell to come back? That's the kind of femininity I want. If that's the kind of femininity that we have, then I would just desert. <laughs> I just dessert. I got, what am I doing here? Uh, here to fight for my family. Maybe I'll come back to see my family again, but like, 
what's going to make me want to stick around as a guy, take after the, look after the kids, to keep supporting you. That's not the kind of personality of woman that that's good for. That's a hoe, a slutty woman. That's easy, that maybe she's not that, maybe it's difficult to get with her, but not historically if she's been with so many guys. She's got to be a higher value guy to get with her, but she's easy on that level of the human culture. Be at that level or a little bit above and she's easy. And so she's to be used like that. Have fun with her. It's not that I wouldn't. That's the mistake women make. They, they think that if we judge them as like wrong, that we still don't want to fuck them. No, totally. I would totally fuck you. But that's because there's no risk to me to fuck you. Zero. Just what? Pay a few hundred dollars for like, you know, hoarding you over a few weeks or a few months or whatever. Just some happy gestures that make me feel good also. Taking pictures with you so I can make other girls jealous so it gets me further down the line of seduction with other women. And if you're going to try to cut me off from other women, like you have podcasts talking about sex, like that's not something I would ever want our kid or at my parents knowing that you did or nobody. And you're like, well, that's because you're co so confined, Chris. You care so much about the opinions of people that are around you that you wouldn't date a girl that like had that lifestyle. Yeah, because it's poor values. I wouldn't want my daughter to do it or my niece to do it or young girls to be looking up to that kind of thing. Like I said, it's fun. I would be around you because you're fun. But if, if fun, fun's not all that gets it done got to be some other it's, you know fun isn't necessarily female quality fun is a male quality but fun is generated from like the male and female interacting together but like the entertainment like women can be entertaining but fun is like you generate something from within you create you're a creative person that brings out other people's interest and want to participate like that's a male energy so she could have that but that's a masculine energy The appeal of being with a woman that has sexual experience, or that's good at sex or whatever, is it goes as far as sex, and that's about it. And that's where, as far as she's valued herself, too. She knows she doesn't have qualities, uh, you know, beyond sex that would make a man stick around. So she uses sex as her weapon. She uses sex as her bait. She uses sex as her, you know, bottom line uh, negotiating chip. All right. So this recording, so you can totally leave your review for that. All right. Is there anything from you guys? Oh, no. Who uh, of the live audience, anybody read The Greatest Salesman? I know not Gene was reading it just a minute ago. He was checking my words as I was doing it. So it's a great book. I recommend it. Short. Yes, brother. I had been, I've been reading this for two months. I'm still on the first scroll. So it was cool uh, that, you know, reading the second scroll for the first time with you. Nice. Nice, nice. It's only 110 pages, big print, easy book. You know, somebody, somebody who's in Dragon's Lair right now, but he doesn't really participate, doesn't watch the recordings. His name is uh, Isabello, Isabello Pascal. And he was talking about needing to get his business up, you know, he's studying some sales or whatever. I don't know how much, he, but he's not watching uh, Arash stuff. He was talking about he needed to still finish the, the Beast Phase 1 product, which was a camp that was done like in July of last year. It's May now. So 10 months ago, he's like, hasn't finished. It's like eight hours. 15 hours or something so but yet he's studying other sales stuff i'm like you're studying other sales stuff like i learned from bc brian casella and i learned from arash and i picked up whatever business advice i learned from arash and vince and i've studied arash so much more than i studied vince so much so so much more than i studied bc although i studied bc substantially i studied like seven of his products maybe which are just short videos you know about an hour and a half the products are you know, I studied maybe 20 or 30 of his lectures. So a substantial amount, I suppose, like 40, 50 hours, 60 hours of uh, watching his stuff. It was a long time ago. I also listened to The Way of the Wolf by Jordan Belfort. And we could talk about that one day. And that's the extent of my sales training. Jordan Belfort, BC, and then whatever business tips I picked up from Vince, whatever business tips I picked up for wherever, for that matter. And, uh, and then Arash, which is how to do sales, how to do business, which has very little to do with the logistics of 
delivering a recording, of taking someone's money, of what it all emphasizes is communication, delivering value, listening for emotions, good communication, being certain of your self-confidence, like things like this. And of course, with what I'm selling and what he sold to me, like this philosophy, this, this school of philosophy and living. So it's like when you're certain of what you're offering, like if I was going to sell solar, if I was going to sell a car, like if I was going to sell a house to be just so certain of what I'm offering. I'm not trying to beat around the bush, not being vague with it. When I was selling my yoga, just being right to the point. And each attempt makes me sharper. If, if I come to it with a sharper presence, each attempt and attempted sale will make me sharper. Because if I don't get it, I'll see. I should be taking notes. I should be writing down, like, where did it go wrong? What was the DLV in the sale? What went right? What was good about it? Like, you don't have to write all of those things for each phone call you make. But when things stand out, you should have something that you're collecting so that you're not just trial and error. That will get you somewhere. But everybody's doing that. How do you leap ahead? You leap ahead by practicing transcendental meditation, by way of the wolf and greatest salesman in the world, by working on your tonality and your delivery, by working on your process. This is from Brian Casella, by working on the business itself. It's not just doing business. Working on the business is time spent strategizing what you're doing, not just doing tasks related to the business. TL's driving, he should be looking at the data once a week. He should be looking at the data, what are the peak times? What are the peak areas? Where did I get tips? Like whatever data you have, work with it and look at it for a little bit of time each week or so, and it gets get better. You develop a whole system. That's what I did with yoga. That's why I took over the yoga world. Like if Shereen was doing petitioning, that's what he'd be doing, you know? Gavin was doing concerts. If Najim is selling printing services or whatever, like, you know, you have a roster and you get good at the, you know, what are the questions, you know, are you, do you still have printing needs? Like, what are your biggest printing needs? What was your biggest printing order last year? Or, you know, what are your complaints about the other printers that you worked with? Like, where did they fall short? And it's like, you start putting it together and you get a script and it's like, it becomes second nature. And it still might be a hustle and grind. It might not be that big of an industry. Like yoga was a very small industry. So being the top guy in the world, I know, and any top guy in the world, it makes something. But what I was doing, building up from the bottom, even if I was so great, you know, it was earning me in the 30 Ks, 30, 32K or so, 34K a year. And uh, it's kind of like being the best Olympic wrestler or something. There's no professional league. Like you could be a less athletic person, but in basketball and have more of a future, make more money with it less of a world-class this or that. They don't, basketball players don't work any harder, but they, you make so much more. You know, at the top of the world, they make so much more. The top Olympic wrestler, the top wrestler in the world is still going to make jack shit. He's not going to be able to take sponsorships. He's, you know, he's whatever. He'll make in wrestling uh, co coaching camps or whatever. He makes more money coaching kids camps over the summer than anything competition-wise. And... You know, so your industry matters in that, but you can leverage it. If you become the best at something, people want to interact with you and you can translate that and migrate out of that industry or put somebody like Oracle's doing, put somebody in charge of your business while you migrate onto the next business, whatever that is. And, or you meet the right clients. So then you're now you're printing billboards or you're printing fucking, uh, you know, government uh, pamphlets or something that like, you get a government contract for something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just making the right connections, yes, but it is, it is about your communication in those interactions, and that is born from your mindset, which is born from your discipline and your living philosophy, which, you know, in a lot of ways just depends on, you know, what philosophy have you been in contact with? What have you sought out? And this is, the mind is a minefield, it's a labyrinth. And so when you have an example, like a North Star or whatever, you go towards it, there's obstacles, you just keep going. You didn't know there was a bunch of swamps and shit in between you and the North Star. You just started walking. And then there was like, you know, thorn bushes. And then there was like a desert. And then there was like, you didn't see all that from where you were because there were trees in front of you. And then there was like, you know, wild animal, whatever. There was a river, an ocean between, you didn't even know. You were just walking towards the North Star. But that's a little exaggerated because it's not a North Star. You were just walking towards Mount Everest. You, it was really there. It, was, it wasn't like, because we can't walk to the North Star, but we can walk to the top of Mount Everest. If you saw it from so far away or whatever, you might not know all the obstacles on the way there. You might give up. It might not be worth it. You know, I think it's worth it. This is a better example than, you know, Mount Everest because what's the point of climbing Mount Everest? There's a point in becoming a best at this. There's a point in becoming a best at your mindset, at your imagination, at your communication. 
where you are in your life, in your context, the communication lines, the people you have interactions with, there is value you can give them. There is influence to be had from them. And they may not be worth putting too much of your time in. So there's that assessment also. And moving on, and how do you move on? It's going to come through research, through calls, going out and meeting people in one way or participating in life. Leveraging your brothers. You could be in communication with your brothers by streaming, by you know, getting fully involved in your life. And it's difficult, man. It's difficult. It's still not easy for me. Maybe I'm only 35. Now, Jim's like, I'm older than that. Shamir's like, I'm 23. Like, there's a range. But, you know, now I'm starting to make money through negotiation and through, you know. And it's still like, I see how there's a trap of thinking that I've made it. But it's not. I have 35 more years at least. Maybe 45, 55 more years maybe. You know, I'm a baby at this thing. How can I reinvest in myself, in my business, in my life, in my relationships? This is my, this is my retirement fund, is my mind. This is my disability policy, is my mind, my value. Yeah, God forbid I fucking fall on my bike and somebody runs over my head with a car or something. God damn. But I mean, fuck that, even if I had disability insurance. Maybe it just can be something less than that. I just get my arm run over. Like, yeah, that shit, you know. I think playing the game of life in with this strategy of just in case that happens is more likely to make it happen. That's maybe just my philosophy. I'm just one guy. It's not an I, it's not a big enough sample size to just say just because I believe that, that that's the case. But I'm saying I get my money, I invest in myself. I pay a little bit to uh, the apprentices, pay a little bit to the guardians for doing some tasks. I make my money work for me. I get practice at doing that. I, you know, pay off some debts. I'm looking at the car loan. I need to get a lease for the car. So the second car here. Now it gets to another level. People come around for the camps where the guardians need to go somewhere. Like I get practice at that. AZD put me in charge of getting the restaurants for the weekends and, and scheduling that. And it's just a little bit more authority, a little bit more power, a little bit more responsibility. When I have a car, guess what? When we stay out on Friday, Saturday nights, guess what? We're staying in gaming. I just don't want to take an Uber ride home and I don't want to rely on someone else to take me home. I'll do that. I'll stay an extra 30, 45 or 60 minutes and walk around to the bar next door and just start up some conversation. If I got a buddy with me and we're just shooting the shit and having a good time, it'll be easy to open somebody you know, with these vibes. You say, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? You know, hey, how you doing? And now I live camp downtown Campbell's five minutes away. Santana Row is eight minutes away or whatever. It's better than where we were. We're in the center heart of things. Just reinvesting in my life, discipline, timing, enthusiasm, you know, being in love with it, the, the drudge, the mud of life. Yeah, you got to scrape your, your heels are dragging and your boots are sunk, sunk in it. It's like suctioned in and you just got to do it. You know what? Just take your time. Be patient. You know, you probably, if you took your time and be patient, you might, you might think of a funny joke while you're doing it. You might come up with a cool analogy of something, something that later it was really, it was the struggle of life that helped you, your mind develop some creativity, some creative expression that becomes valuable later. Now I can tell the stories of cutting weight. I can tell the stories of, you know, struggling so much and, and loans and debt and pennilessness. And I can tell, I can tell the stories of, uh, you know, girl betraying me or saying this or that about me and destroying reputation or whatever. It doesn't mean I would sought those experiences, but I go, I make it through. I can tell the story. I get better at telling my story. I don't let the world defeat me. I don't let a woman defeat me. I don't let women defeat me. I don't let any of my brothers defeat me. And it becomes a fight sometimes. I'm in a conflict with a high level IMC guy right now. He's not forgiving me. His last message was stay away from me. I mean it. Like, God damn it, man. Did I just burn a bridge with somebody? It's fucking stupid. But you know what? I got this far with my goodness and my ethics and my understanding, my dedication to the teachings. I'm not going to start doubting myself now just because he told me, stay away from me. Wham, wham, wham. Wham, wham, wham. So I feel bad about hurting his feelings or whatever. I do. I, I wish I was a better communicator and I could have said what I, what I had to say instead of being so insecure about what I had to say because I got my feelings hurt or whatever. But I've gotten this far. I mean, I'm top on the planet, not as a pickup artist. Not as a seduction artist, not as a massage therapist, not as a yoga instructor, not as an engineer, not as a bodybuilder, not as a calisthenics guy, 
whatever everybody here does, not as a model, not, not as a pimp, not a whatever. I'm best in the world at what I do, selling AZD camps and pulling, integrating IMC Nation, directing the operations of IMC Base One. And maybe I'm only dealing with a small pool of people, maybe it's only a few thousand that are even exposed to this stuff. There's probably tens of thousands that are exposed to it, but there's thousands that like subscribe. And then there's hundreds that pay. And then there's dozens that keep coming around. And then looking in contrast, AZD to other guys, Neil Strauss, Mystery, Discovery, Vince Kelvin, Hypnotica, whatever pimp, whatever dating coach, dating consultant, sex gurus or whatever. The followings are just terrible. It's just a terrible following. It's not integrated. And, you know, so I got here this far trusting myself, believing in my goodness. If it's going to fix, it's going to fix off of my goodness for sure. And if it doesn't, then, you know, it'll just be one of those stories that becomes a, a story that I tell uh, through the difficulty and the hardship and the miscommunication and misunderstanding. I just stick to my, stick to my guns, my goodness, my, my ability to study, my ability to, to put in discipline on myself. And you know, my ability to imagine, my ability to imagine a better future for myself, a better structure, a better schedule, a, a smarter way to get from point A to point B. And, uh, and with that, I guess I'll close it out. Anything from you guys? If you're uh, watching the recording, like, share, follow. Subscribe, leave a review. Yeah. Um, as always, this was excellent, but this particular episode, podcast, this was incredible. Not only because your speech is so free, but I can see it relates to your mind being so free. And so it's nice to be around that. Like, I'm sure everybody here agrees with that. Like, this is a calming space and it's a very <clears throat> not educational but very informative i think that's a good way to put it so i just want to say thank you yeah thank you i didn't know it you know sometimes i'll i'll get to judging like there's only four people watching and it's really they're high level people high level people you know i respect gavin a lot i respect najim a lot i respect shamir a whole hell of a lot i respect tiel a lot and uh you know, you wouldn't know from this audience, you know, how much money flows through the camps each month. You would think, well, it must, how is it this business is going down? Nah, nah, I'm not even the main, I'm not the main teacher, I'm not even close. This is like a subset of it. And, you know, so I get to judging myself on the numbers of it. And it's nice to hear that feedback. So I, I, I can tell I'm very passionate about what I'm saying. I don't have a lot to say. And, uh, you know, I, don't know, I want to keep going. I appreciate that, you know. I think I'm getting better at not being too uh, heady with my communication and my wording, uh, but I also don't, I try not to shy away too much from grammar or the, you know, the ability to articulate that I developed through years of study or whatever. So it might come across heady and nerdy or whatever. So it speaks to your intelligence to really understand it and to appreciate it. That's all I had to say on that. All right. Well, there's no hearing lecture tonight. So I'll see you guys on Dragon's Lair in the morning. If you're catching this recording, go to imcbase1.com, imcbase1.com, and check out the latest offerings. All right, everybody live. See you next time. Thanks.